Good afternoon. Thank you very much for joining me for another uh, Monday afternoon unboxing. I say another one. Last week was Tuesday. Um, if you can hear me and see me okay, please let me know uh, in the chat if everything is working fine. Uh, and yeah, let's just move them to one side. We're going to come on to those later on. Uh, this is going to actually be, as it says at the bottom, uh, Papua and Mayscape unboxing. Uh, it was advertised as just this, but I am going to be covering the other games later on. Uh, and let's talk about this one first. So this is actually, this is not a new game, okay? This was released uh, 2018. Uh, it is on Board Game Geek. I recently got a copy of it from Devere Games. Uh, there's a bit of an interesting story behind this one because Devere contacted me. Um, they are a publisher which has gone on my radar recently uh, because of Red Cathedral, mainly. Um, but then as I've started looking into their other games, they do some really good games. So this one uh, was of interest to me. We're going to unbox it now because it's two to four players, ages 10 and up, so it's not that complicated. I think the weight rating on BGG is two and a half, something like that. Plays in 75 minutes, nice theme, uh, components and artwork look good. And from what I read about it, it combines worker placement, resource management, and a bit of set collection. So it's a Euro game, it's absolutely a Euro game. It's right in my wheelhouse. Um, and Devere were happy to send me a copy of it on the uh, on the basis that I don't know when I'm gonna get this played. We're still in lockdown in the UK, and when lockdown ends in a few months time, uh, my list of games that I need to play with people when they come round uh, is, is quite high. So it will get covered on the channel at some point, I don't know where. And yes, I have had my hair cut. So this is a new lockdown haircut. Uh, Vicky did this yesterday downstairs while I was watching the, the painting stream. So there we go. So uh, the box, as you can just about see, we're getting a bit of a reflection. So we've got some, um, what's it called? UV coating on here. Is it UV coating? What's it called when you put the shiny bit on? Uh, anyway, we're gonna, we're gonna open it up and we're gonna see what's inside. Just get the smell. So yeah, so if you've seen any other Devere games, you will know, let's, let's zoom in a bit. Uh, you'll know that the quality is is pretty good. I mean, Red Cathedral, the production quality was out of this world. So I'm expecting good things from this one. And thank you for including Ziploc bags. Okay, let's get the box out of the way and let's look first at the game board. In fact, I'm going to zoom in a little bit with the... There you go. Right, so let's move these to one side. Uh, let's look at the components first. Uh, we have a trifold board, so that's going to fit on most tables, I think, long and thin, uh, and you can have players sat to either side of it. Now, interestingly enough, from the overview video that I watched just earlier, this here is not a victory point track. This is your energy track, so players will start off here, and you'll actually spend energy to move down here to do the different uh, different actions of the game. I can't tell you that much about the game because I've not read the rules. <laughs> um, so I can just give you a very, very brief overview from what I've um, what I've learned in the last 10 minutes. So yeah, it's end of the 19th century, remote island uh, in the Pacific, still unknown. Each player is heading a sort of scientific expedition uh, and it'll be the player with the most points that wins. I think this is the points track here. Yeah. Uh, player count is two to four. And it says playtime is 75 minutes. Um, so I'm just going to mute the microphone while I open these packets, because otherwise it's going to be a bit too crinkly. There you go. Is crinkly a word? If it's not, it is now. So each player will have their own individual uh, meeples. Let's zoom in a bit so we can see. Let's just move that around a bit. There we go. Right, so each player is going to have these. Um, they're all in the same shape, but they're colour-coded. Then each player has one of these. Now, again, we've got nice silk screen printing on these. So each player will have one of these tokens, one of these tokens. I don't know what goes where. So I'm going to assume that the heart goes on here, because that's your energy. Um, and maybe this is victory points. This looks like an award symbol. I think this is probably going to go over here on the award track. Who knows? Who knows? But anyway, meeples for each player. We also have custom dice. So you will notice these dice are not normal dice. Uh, we have a one, 
we have a two, we have a three, we have a four, we have a five. Oh, okay, so they are normal dice, but in the six, we have something, something special. Yeah. Player boards. These look like player boards. Oh no, they're player screens. Right, okay, so these are actually, I have seen a number of games recently where player screens are on really thin card, and they work, but yeah, these aren't. These, these are these are much thicker card than I'm used to with player screens. And they've got the nice little angle, so yeah, they, they sit fine. And this look, because I did mention it's set collection, you're collecting cards, uh, and this looks to have a full breakdown of all of the scoring opportunities in the game. So that's good. That, that information is there for you, rather than having it on a separate, separate card. Okay, so there you go, player screens, cards. Let's see what the card quality is like. Yeah, boards with maps on. Beth Hiley was saying this on Board Game Geek. Any board that has a map on it is instantly good. And I, and I yeah, I mean, I, I love maps. So I feel the same way about boards with maps on. Okay, right. So, card... Oh, that's thick. Yeah, good thick cards. Let's zoom in a bit just so we can see some of the artwork on these cards. That's your thing. Now, if you're wondering about whether this game is available or not, I have been told uh, by Devere today that the game is available. There is, uh, it is in stock in the UK and the US. Obviously, I can't give you any opinions on the game yet because I've not, I've not played it at all. Um, but yeah, so there's some of the cards. So we've got, um, it looks like we have iconography and we have text. And it looks like the text is a description of the iconography. But once you understand what the iconography means, for example, each of the other players rolls two fewer dice during the next round. Well, good, they use few instead of less. Um, so yeah, it looks like once you understand the iconography, you don't need the text. Apart from, of course, this card, where there's no iconography because there's loads of text on it. Okay, but there you go. We've got lots of cards here. Uh, these must be one particular type of card. Ones, twos ones and twos, probably not supposed to have shuffled those. We have another type of card here with these on, and then another type of card with these on. Okay, so these, these are the things I think you're trying to collect. If anybody knows in the chat and can correct me, but yes. So the artwork on these is nice as well. But yeah, your scientific research going to here and discovering stuff. That's the stuff that you're trying to discover. Uh, and then we have some extra cards. My guess is each player gets one of these at the start of the game, and this is like a special roll or something like that. Um, but yeah, there you go. So that's, that's most of the components. What we have is we have two sheets of punch board. So we're gonna do Paul's punch test, which we've accidentally done just by, yeah, so these are, these are punching out, oops. I've just lost the coin over there. Um, yeah, so these are punching out. Don't do, don't do this at home. It, it's my test to see how well it punches out without it leaving any marks. So yeah, these are a, these are a substantial thickness. They're not like super thick. I think they're mil, mil and a half, but they're good, solid, and they punch out well with no marks. Right, rule book. I'm not going to read the whole rule book today. I am just going to do a very, very quick uh, visual look at it. So we have components. We have an itemized components list with pictures. Plus one point for that. We have an objective of the game. It's good to get that in early. We have setup. We have numbered points in a setup with an image. So this is all exactly as I would want a rule book to start with. Um, the layout looks nice. We've got big boxes for certain things. So that looks good. We have some examples with big red arrows. I do like big red arrows. Yeah, so just on a pure visual look at it, it looks well laid out. And the rules, they're not that, not that many. Because we have end of the game here. Special rules for two-player games. There is no solo mode, unfortunately. There may be something on BGG, um, but yeah, no solo mode built in. Speaking of BGG, let's just have a quick look and see what information we have on here. So you can see here the weight rating is 2.83. Uh, for those people who don't know what the, what the weight rating is, it's how complex 
or difficult the game is, it ranges from one to five, but anything that's a four or higher is like super complex. So I wouldn't have thought this was 2.83 based on the fact that it says 10 or more, uh, but this is a purely user rating. This is not the official rating. This is purely on what people have rated it themselves. Um, uh, the actual rating of the game is 6.8. 6.8 is not that high. Um, I will obviously give you my opinion on it when I when I eventually do play the game. But generally speaking, for me, anything that's a 7 or a 7.5 is good. Uh, I mean, I'm not going to go into the comments now and find out why, and I will have my own opinion on it. Um, but there we go. So we've got uh, we've got a review from the Dice Tower. We've got another unboxing in Portuguese. We've got no tutorial video for the game, but that's fine. The rulebook looked fairly okay, so... Yeah, should be all right with that. Um, that's it. That's it for this game. So yeah, watch this space. It might even be the end of the year by the time I get round to playing this. I don't know. I, as I say, I've got a lot of games to cover. Um, and it's even when lockdown ends, I am not suddenly going to have 20 people around the house playing games all weekend. It's going to be a gradual phased thing. So a friend of mine, Rick, is coming round on May the 19th. Uh, for those people watching who thought it was May the 17th, we've moved it to May the 19th. That is the first time we're allowed people around the house. Rick's coming around and we're playing Imperial Assault all day. Um, and then Nick and Gemma are going to be coming around to play Merlin. Uh, and that's all I've got planned. So, yes. Right. So the next two things. Now, these are games that I've never heard of. and They arrived in the same box with Papua. So I knew I was getting that. But I didn't know I was getting these and I'd never heard of these. Okay, so I think these might be new. Let me just go back to BGG. Called Maze Escape. Right, yeah, these are new. These are both out in 2021. Um, yeah, so th these are new releases. Uh, and as I say, th these were included in the same box. Uh, I didn't know. Uh, will I live stream the Imperial Assault? Yes, I will be live streaming Imperial Assault all day on May the 19th. It was going to be May the 4th. Yeah, right. We've got two of these. They are both standalone. Um, and I'm going to open one of them. And I'm going to be careful to avoid spoilers. Um, so what you get in this game is you get a set of rules in different languages. So we've got Spanish, Portuguese, French... English, right? Yeah, you get the rules. And you get seven of these little booklets. Okay? Now, each of these seven booklets is a standalone little game. Um, and it recommends that you do them in order, but there isn't any need to do them in order. And you don't need to do this box before you do this box. Okay? Now, I have read through the rules, uh, and this is definitely something that um, is me and Vicky are going to play together. Uh, and without, without giving too many spoilers, what I will do is I will tell you what you need to do in this game. So basically what happens is you unfold it, okay? And then you either use your finger or you get this little pointing stick and you start off here on the compass rows. And the idea is that you've got to get to there, which is called, I think it's like the impossible triangle or something. Uh, yeah, your goal is to reach the exit, uh, which is the impossible triangle. So what you do is you move your pointer around like this. Oh, we can't get there. Right, okay, so what you do is you unfold the map. Now, there are rules about unfolding the map uh, in that you can only fold it or unfold it along the folds. You can't just suddenly start, you know, bending it wherever you want to. So I, I've not played this yet, but you're going to see me play it just to start. So we're going to go here. Now we're on here. We can't fold this. You can't fold the sheet where you are on. So what we're going to do is we're going to unfold that that way. And then we're going to go back here. And now we're here. We can unfold that that way. And we could, if we wanted to, unfold that that way. Then we can go back to here. Now we can unfold that. We can go back to here. Then we can do that, etc., etc. Right? I don't want to give too many spoilers away, but that's what you're trying to do. And there's also some little extra achievements along the way. So your main goal is to get to the impossible triangle. But there are also three chests. To find on the way and there are also you've got to pull the lever to turn the lighthouse on okay and if you get really stuck there's a qr code on here 
which actually is, I believe, a solution <laughs> to tell you where to find everything. So everyone is different, and these these extra things to do, it's the, the, the main thing to do is always the same, gets the impossible triangle, but the extra things to do are different depending on each one. I have no idea how, how long each one will take. It says five to 90 minutes. It says it's a solo game, but me and Vicky are gonna do this together and argue about who gets to play with the pen. Um, but there you go, that's it. So yeah, I had no idea these were coming. Thank you very much to Devere for sending them because they, they might not have known that me and Vicky love little puzzle games like this. Um, as I say, very, very simple rules. So yeah, if you're interested, I, I don't I don't even know. Shall we should we just have a look now to see if you can get them online? Because I didn't ask about these. Uh, so I'm gonna go to Games Law, the UK's largest specialist games retailer. Uh, and I'm gonna search for Maze Escape. Maze Escape, yeah. Right, okay. No mention of it. So yeah. I will I will contact Devere and find out when these are out because I know I know Cosmos do a lot of their distribution in the UK, um, but I haven't seen these mentioned by Cosmos. As I say, I, I didn't know anything about them until they arrived. Um, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. So it's not on board game prices and it's not on um, it's not on Games Law yet. So yeah, when I find out, I will post a message on my Patreon supporters Slack channel uh, to say when these are available. But if you're interested in them. Contact Devere uh, and say, Oi, Paul Grogan just did an unboxing of these little puzzle games. Where can I get them from? Um, it could be that these are advanced copies. I, I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm looking forward to playing these. Uh, they look quite cool. We are all done. Thank you very much uh, for joining me. Um, I do these. The, the aim is that I do these at five o'clock so that it, it tries to bring my uh, working day to a close. Because uh, otherwise I'll, I'll just sit downstairs and carry on working until the sun goes down. Um, but yeah. Thank you very much for joining me. Thank you very much to all of my Patreon supporters uh, for helping fund the channel. And if you like the content that I make and you want to support me, uh, check out the Patreon page, patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. Apparently, Thirsty Meeples has them for pre-order. Right. There we go then. So they're going to be available at some point. That's it. I'm done. Thanks very much for watching. Take care and I'll see you next time. is proudly sponsored by Game Toppers, upgrading your gaming experience. Visit GameToppersLLC.com.